All right, today we're going over five reasons why people go back to Windows from Linux. So now, sometimes after a Windows user gets to Linux, they'll actually go back to Windows for one reason or another. And I'm gonna go over those reasons in this video. All right, number five, too many options. Now, if you're gonna go get Windows, well, there's really only two options for the average consumer, Windows 10 Home, and Windows 10 Pro. Well, three, if you can't Windows 10 S mode. By the way, if you haven't heard of that, that sucks. In fact, with Mac OS, there's really only one option, just Mac OS. But with Linux, there's literally hundreds of distros out there. Like, Windows users, when they come over to Linux, get confused as to which one to choose. Now, to make this simpler for you, for a beginning user, I'd recommend Ubuntu or Linux Mint, just to narrow it down for you. And also, what a lot of Windows users don't know is that Linux is extremely customizable. Like, it is unfathomable the amount of customization power that you have in Linux. So not being aware of that, Windows users will like distro hop through a few distros trying to find that silver bullet, the one that fits them just right, which that doesn't exist. Don't chase that. Then eventually through their distro hopping cycle, they'll just give up and be like, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna go back to what I'm familiar with, Windows. All right, number four, specialized hardware. So now, don't get me wrong, the vast, vast majority of all standardized hardware out there, if not all of it, will work just fine with Linux. You may need to do a kernel update to get it working if it's like brand new, but other than that, every standardized piece of hardware should work in Linux just fine. What I'm talking about is specialized hardware. Like, I'm talking VR headsets, capture cards, proprietary Wi-Fi cards, etc. Like, most of that specialized hardware has drivers which only work with Windows. So on Linux, you either need to tinker with commands to get an unofficial driver installed, or worst case, you just can't use that piece of hardware on Linux at all, which just sucks, because then you have to suck it up and either just use Windows or not use that piece of hardware. You can't do neither. And unfortunately, there's not much you can do about that, at least not right now. All right, number three, Windows exclusive software. Now, some Windows users, and by some I mean most, have programs installed that just won't work on Linux, and they gotta find alternatives for those programs and learn how to use them. Now, sure, I know you can run it in Wine, but it's not perfect, and it doesn't always work. Now, there are a lot of those very proprietary programs that people get caught on, but the big ones are Adobe Creative Suite, which in case you're not familiar, that's Premiere Pro, Photoshop, all that Adobe professional stuff, and Microsoft Office. Like two programs that'll only work with Windows or Mac that just won't run on Linux. Like you either need to run them on a VM or under a separate partition, or you need to run a probably older version in Wine, but that third option isn't a perfect solution. And the other two options kind of suck, to be honest, because with the first one, you get a reboot to get access to your Windows programs, then you gotta reboot again to get access to your Linux programs, so you can't have access to both. And with the VM, there's a huge performance penalty. Not only that, but some people just use their computer exclusively for those real proprietary programs. So then they can't switch to Linux, and they get to Linux, realize that they cannot run those those programs and then they just go back to Windows. It sucks, but what can you do? And that leads me perfectly into number two, Windows exclusive games. Now, some people have a lot of games in their Steam library, for example, that are Windows exclusive. So now, don't get me wrong, Linux support for games has greatly improved since even like a few years ago, but it's still not up to par with Windows. Just, you gotta admit that. So that's the thing. You gotta basically run those games in Wine or Proton, which Wine, as I said, is nowhere near a perfect solution. And Proton is easier, but still not perfect. And there are those games where it's not like we can't run them in Wine or Proton, because we can. It's just that we can't get their anti-cheat systems to like that the game is running in a computer 
compatibility layer. Or you got a dual boot. And by the way, unless you have a second graphics card, a VM just won't work. Like with a VM, unless you have a second graphics card, your frame rate will be so low that the game's pretty much unplayable. So unless the user's either willing to dual boot or the user can run it in line or more likely Proton, then they just go back to Windows. They're like, forget it. I just want to be able to play all my games. And finally, number one, which is at least in my opinion, the biggest one, unwillingness to learn. A lot of people go into Linux thinking that it's just like Windows and everything will be the same. And then they realize that they got to learn something new and they just don't want to do that. And then they just go back to Windows and they'll even make up excuses for it. And they also realize that some of their programs don't work and they got to find alternatives for those programs and learn how to use them as well. The thing I want to say is Linux is not Windows. They're two completely different things. You cannot make Linux work like Windows. It just doesn't happen. Like everything about Windows is completely different from Linux. Like for example, it installs programs completely differently. It runs programs completely differently. It just works completely differently. Again, you can't make Linux work like Windows. And that's probably for the better because there are just so many flaws with Windows. Like I've done an 11 minute rant about 10 of those issues, which by the way, I encourage you to go check out that video. I'll link it up in the card. But just know, Linux is vastly superior to Windows. Just is. The thing is like, it is kind of hard for a new user to learn a new way of doing stuff, especially after being a lifelong Windows user. Like it's not that hard to learn once you get past the basics. But there's still a bit of a learning curve. Like when you get past the differences, it's just that you've been using Windows for 10 plus years and with Linux, you gotta learn something new. And most people just don't wanna do that. They just wanna stick with what they know because that's the easiest thing to do. And easy is the path most people take. And I wanna get into a bonus. Not so much reason people will go back to Windows from Linux, but more reason why people don't even give Linux a try at all. And that is the the myths about Linux that are going around. Which by the way, I made a whole video covering 10 of those. I'll link that up in the card. But just know there's so many half-truths and just to be honest with you, complete lies about Linux that are going around the internet that just scare away new users and make them hesitant to ever try Linux. Just don't believe people that say that Linux is far too complex. Like that's like saying Windows is far too complex. Every time you install a new program, you're learning something new. Like when you get past the differences, it's just that you've been using Windows for 10 plus years and with Linux, you gotta learn something new. But anyway, those are five reasons why people go back to Windows from Linux. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it interesting, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.